The inspector from the health department was just here and gave me a pass on my composting toilet here in the state of Arizona. This is the inspection report and you can see that there's a pass there and he just made a few notes about the vents being installed and screened and the bug trap and that I painted it for sun protection. Anyhow, I posted a video yesterday telling you guys how to build this system and a lot of people started asking questions about how does it work and so I thought that I would kind of give you a rundown of how the composting barrel toilet that I put together works. I'm going to read you the overview of the barrel composting toilet system from Arizona Health Department. The barrel composting toilet system utilizes a 55 gallon high density polyethylene barrel in a batch type toilet system. A batch design refers to the complete segregation of aging material from fresh material. The toilet is simple to use and odorless. The design can be installed indoors or outdoors. In outdoor locations it must be used in mild climates to ensure sufficient heating and effective composting. Outdoor installations are suitable for locations with an average temperature of 50 Fahrenheit or higher during the four coldest months of the year. In colder climates, the system can either have additional barrels to allow the aging barrels to compost fully during warmer months or be located indoors, preferably in a heated space where it is protected from temperature extremes. A toilet seat and ventilation assembly is placed on top of an empty barrel. This barrel is known as the active barrel. When the active barrel is full, it becomes an aging barrel. At this time, the seat and ventilation assembly is moved to an adjacent empty barrel, which now becomes the active barrel. The aging barrel contents continue to compost for a minimum of four months before being emptied. The total number of barrels required for the system is based on the number of people using the toilet. One person living full-time on their land needs to have two barrels. Two adults living full-time on their land needs three barrels. Children under 10 years of age are considered 0.5 persons. After each use, it's recommended that you moisten the toilet paper with water from a squirt bottle located beside the toilet. This helps with the next step. Be sure to moisten only the toilet paper, not the surrounding compost. Cover the deposit and toilet paper with sufficient carbon-based cover material, such as wood shavings. If you decide to build a urine diverter into your composter, it should be rinsed with about a quarter to a half a cup of water using the squirt bottle as well. Close the lid after each use to prevent entry into the compost chamber by insects. This is how composting takes place in the aging and inactive barrels. The contents of the aging barrel will now compost for a minimum of four months with no additional material being added. The aging barrels are aerated once every two weeks using a compost crank. The barrel containing the oldest material shall be aerated first, then the next oldest, and finally the active barrel. This ensures that pathogenic material will not be transferred from fresher to older material. With that explanation from the state of Arizona, I'm also just going to give you guys a quick run over of what's going on over here with the toilet barrel composting system. Obviously, I just simply have two 55 gallon plastic barrels here. I dug down into the ground to make sure that these were not more than 16 inches above ground and not less than 12 inches above ground. That's important to pass your inspection. You also have to have a gasket between the lid that you create and the bucket. And this gasket is attached to the lid. So when I move this lid from this active barrel to this barrel, I can lock it down using these bungee cords and I can seal out any insects from being able to get in. You can use a normal toilet lid and then put gaskets between the, the lid that folds down and the seat, or you can use something heavy like this because this seals down and it's heavy enough that insects can't crawl in and get into the bucket. These two inch elbows go into the to the lid and they use uh, hose clamps to hold them in on the inside. I used a Gorilla Glue and other PVC to attach mine. And they also use hose clamps to hold the the venting on or the the mesh. Well, I used PVC to pinch mine in and so you can fill uh, the vent 
nice and sturdy in there. There's no way for insects to get in through these vents or through this tee, which has an insect uh, collector on the top here. And all this is, is a glass jar. So if for some reason an insect got in while you were using it, the only way out is to fly up through this. There's a little hole in the top and the insect would wind up being caught in this jar. And you can empty this jar anytime you need to, although I don't think that it'll get full very often. You can probably see the, the vent in there and that keeps insects out. And there's one in every one of these. Uh, so there's just no way for insects to get in. They use springs, but I had bungee cords. And so that's how I held this down, really nice and solid. And I can use this barrel, and once this barrel is about three quarters full, I can move the lid over to the other barrel, make that the active barrel, and this one will start to compost. And this will compost for at least four months, and every two weeks I'll come in and stir it. And once it's composted, I can move it over to a larger composting area. Um, or I could go ahead and spread it under some of my juniper trees and things like that. Uh, it'd be a really good compost for the soil. It's just too hot to record out there right now. So there's one caveat that the inspector had, and it's about black water. So if you set this system up, you know, if you have a kitchen of any kind, a kitchen sink or whatnot, you still need to have a black water septic system technically. On the small scale that that I'm cooking and whatnot, uh, what what your main concern would be is if you had a regular kitchen sink and you get an oily pan and you wash the pan and that oil just goes into the ground, that's black water and it needs to have its own treatment. Having a large enough septic system would take care of that. In my case, I have kind of a gray water system where I shower, maybe wash laundry with natural soaps that are salt-based or goat milk, and that's totally fine. That water just goes out, and, and I have kind of a ditch, and I'm growing corn and things in there using that water. And that water, you could technically probably filter that water and drink it, but uh, it, it, so it's just not such a bad water like the black water, which is basically grease. Then I have my composting toilet system now that gets rid of human waste. You also need to have some sort of a black water system so that you can treat that greasy water. Well, in my case, I cook in a skillet. Usually that grease gets poured into a, another little jar so that I can cook with it again later because that's just the way that I live. I, I love to reuse things and I'm really careful. If I have a skillet that needs cleaned out, I wipe it out with paper towels and I throw it in a bucket on a trailer that's going to get hauled to the dump. That's my black water system at this point, which is acceptable. The county and the health department are, are okay with the fact that I'm just really careful and that stuff gets hauled out. But if you want to build a home and permit that home, you need to have a black water system in place. And so that would be a larger septic system, or it sounds like the county's working on implementing a black water barrel system similar to the, to the human waste system I just installed. And, you know, if I find out more about that down the road, I'll tell you about that. Okay, so on top of that, did you know that I make some amazing products? Here on Frugal Off Grid Homestead, I've got some corn flour, blue tea, green tea right here. I also do red tea. It'll be uh, back in stock soon. Check out the website and Amazon.com. I've also got three books up there you can check out. One more thing is obviously my toilet's just in the wide open right now. Well, I'm looking at the what scrap material I have. And by the way, that, that toilet system is 100% scrap material. There's been a couple compliments, or... Er, there's been a couple comments about how someone would build it better or whatever. Well, I think a lot of people stop and don't realize this is frugal off grid. I love to build stuff out of scrap material. That toilet build over there was 100% scrap material. So instead of having to put in a septic system, I put in this free toilet system that's totally permittable by the state of Arizona. And, and that counts and it's important for a lot of my followers. And that's why I do stuff like that. But anyhow, 
I'm looking at my scrap material and I'm gonna throw some pieces over there and soon we'll build in at least some kind of a shanty around the the outhouse basically that that will provide privacy and there will be a roof to, to, to keep the rain off of it and the sun off of it and a door that closes. So we'll see what I come up with, but that, that is something that will be coming soon. If you guys still have questions, leave the comments below. Ask questions about the toilet, the composting system. That's totally cool. Uh, I will answer those if I can. And if you're new, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you find this useful or if you just really don't want to watch this channel ever again. Just throw a thumbs up there and then head on your way. <laughs> and I'll catch you guys on the next video.